A lot of us follow soccer. As we are really close to the finals, we decided to make a short video on the science behind the motion of a soccer ball. When you kick a soccer ball, it moves in three dimensions. Hence, to describe its position at any given instant of time, we need an equation that calculates the x position, an equation for y, and an equation for z. These equations can be derived by applying Newton's second law, F equal to ma. If we know the external force acting on the ball, then we can calculate the position, velocity, and acceleration. Since we have three directions, we will use three force expressions. Now, along the x-axis, the force that acts on the body is the drag force, and along the y-axis, gravity pulls the ball down while drag forces tries to stop it. Finally, along the z-axis, you typically don't have a motion unless you put a spin on it. If your ball surface is rough, then it can cause the boundary layer to behave differently on each side of the ball. This leads to a pressure difference which ultimately makes the ball curve. The faster the ball spins, the more it curves and this is called the Magnus effect. When you put all these equations together and apply basic calculus, you will notice that you have a system of ordinary differential equations. To solve these equations, I wrote a small program that can integrate this system using a fourth order Ranjakata method. With such a program, we can look at the path that a soccer ball would take when it is kicked at different velocities, different angles and even different spin rates. To take it one step further, we also did a CFD simulation and here are the results. Along with the ball motion, we are displaying the ISO surface of vorticity. Vorticity gives us information about localized fluid rotations. Alright, hope you found this video interesting and enjoy the World Cup Finals. Bye.